now that I've got your attention by uh, having KV, the little juice generating gerbil, running around there creating the voltage that's uh, and current that's going to be running the stuff in your house, we want to look at uh, kind of how some of these protection devices work, specifically an arc fault circuit interrupter. Here we are again with another teeny tiny technical tutorial from no SLLC. That would be we. Um, we kind of want to look at uh, what they are, why they are, why you need one, and we're going to be um, focusing on the uh, house main breaker panel out to the loads right here. And uh, we're going to do that by uh, kind of going through a step process here of um, defining what these protecting devices do because there's three that we'll be looking at. First one is um, fuses and circuit breakers. A little bit of review. Most people know kind of what these do. Um, specifically, they protect uh, hardware. Um, this is a very old kind of automotive fuse. You still see a few of these around. Uh, it's easy to see how these things work because they have a glass tube with a little piece of wire in it and the wire will melt when uh, more uh, amperage or current uh, flows through them than the uh, thing can handle. So they, they burn open. So they you can use them one time. Basically they open the hot lead, the power lead. This over here is uh, a circuit breaker which is reusable. Now I've shown a very simplified drawing down here of how these things work. Here's the hot line coming in over here and here's the load over here. Um, there's two parts to this, uh, these simple devices. Um, there's other ways to do this but this is by far the most common. Is There's a, a, a bimetal strip in here that heats up um, as current flows through it. If uh, too much current flows through it, it will eventually bend up here and these two contacts will go open so the circuit will go open. And then there's another thing that's uh, like a relay. It's a solenoid that will, um, when activated, pull these contacts apart, normally made contacts apart. So the uh, heat strip is for um, uh, an overcurrent condition but not a terribly over current condition. Uh, it's a little bit above uh, what the fuse is rated for because the fuse needs to be able to handle these things known as uh, insurges. When you turn on something like a light or a motor there's a, a heavy draw of current uh, initially so just called a surge. Well you don't want the, the uh, fuse to pop or the circuit breaker to pop on that so these things are designed to be able to handle uh, a certain percentage of overcurrent for a uh, limited amount of time. So within this uh, uh, reusable circuit breaker what we have is if you have a massive overload um, and like a dead short um, out here off the load, uh, this solenoid will operate and open those contacts. If you're just slightly over the current uh, value of the, uh, the breaker this thing will slowly heat up and then eventually pop open. Um, and if you go out there and try to set it back too quickly, like, you know, it, it, uh, it uh, pops and you just come out here and try to push it back on um, and you haven't uh, pulled off of whatever the problem was over here, of course, it'll pop again, all right? So these are reusable. They have um, several different ways of uh, handling uh, uh, current overloads, either instantaneous high ones or you know, a lower level, but still too high, slower. So that's what circuit breakers do, fuses do, is they protect the hardware. They do not protect you. Um, if this was a 15 ampere circuit breaker, because they're rated in amps, if this is a 15 amp circuit breaker and you happen to be the thing that grabbed a hold of the hot lead out here, uh, this won't help you. Uh, you you'll very possibly be electrocuted depending on what you're standing on, how wet your hands are, and lots of variables there. So they protect the hardware so your toaster doesn't blow up or that kind of thing, uh, but they don't protect you. So let's look at this other thing. I have a, a small video um, just I recently put up uh, specifically dis uh, discussing and showing in a simulation how a ground fault uh, interrupter, a GFI, a ground fault circuit interrupter works. And these are designed to protect people. 
uh, unlike uh, just a straight circuit breaker. Um, these things will, this is, this is the wall type over here, this is a combo a breaker type over here, so we'll, we'll look at this because most people are familiar with this. Um, these are designed to protect people because what happens is it'll open the hot and the neutral leads on about four to six milliamps. Now what does that mean? Well, these things work simplistically by watching the current flow going out on the one lead and coming back on the other lead. Now because this is AC you can't say that this is the, the, the go out and the come back because the electrons do go out to the toaster in this case and then come back but in the AC world they also come this way right so they just go back and forth like this but the key to this is this little dude right here watches the uh, current that's kind of a simplistic but it, it uh, compares the, the electron flow going this way with the electron flow coming back this way or vice versa and if they're balanced the same number of electrons going this way is coming back this way then it uh, continues to work if they're unbalanced then it will break it'll open up um, actually both sides the neutral and the hot um, and if you want to know more detail about that, go uh, find our little uh, video on uh, ground fault interrupters. So why would there be uh, more electrons going one direction than the other? And the answer, of course, is uh, there was something wrong in the toaster and you were hanging on to the metal casing out here. And um, the difference of the uh, Gozalta and the Gozinta would be going through you. And so you would get, um, you know, shocked on this. But in fact, this happens so quickly, and the current that uh, trips this off is so small that uh, it it protects you. You don't get shocked. So that's what a ground fault uh, circuit interrupter does. So the breakers protect the uh, equipment. The ground fault circuit interrupters protect the people. So one would say, well, then what else do you need? Well. Here's what lots of folks say you're going to need in uh, building new houses. Uh, and that's known as an arc fault circuit interrupter. And that's to protect your house from fire. Now, what does that mean? Well, in electrical uh, equipment, there are what are, what are known as good arcs and uh, bad arcs. Now, what in the world is a good arc? And first off, what is an arc? Well, you see them if you look inside of a motor. Um, when the thing is spinning, when it's turned on, you'll see there's little sparkies kind of going around on this thing as the, uh, the uh, uh, unit spins around here inside of the motor casing. You'll see little sparks. Those are good arcs or sparks. Um, when you flip a light switch internally inside the switch, there'll be a little arc as the contacts either open or close. So lots of things create small arcs in uh, electrical equipment. But there are then bad arcs. Now what is the difference? Well, let's say that um, you had a um, extension cord uh, plugged in running something um, on one side of your room and the uh, extension cord had to plug in to a outlet on the other side of the room and so what did you do you put a throw rug over top of that uh, extension cord and after a while of walking on that thing you start smashing the insulation uh, between the two wires the hot and the neutral or the hot and the ground you start smashing uh, those wires internally and it uh, kind of breaks down the rubber insulation and pretty soon a little bit of electron energy is moving back and forth between the two conductors inside of the uh, cord. Well that can create an arc and that's a bad arc because um, it'll heat up the cord, the cord will heat up and eventually can create a fire. Or how about this, the wiring that's inside of your wall maybe you've got a little mouse running around and it likes uh, the insulation so the little mouse starts eating the insulation until finally the two uh, wires inside that uh, uh, sheath um, can start uh, conducting once again heat up um, vaporize the uh, rubber and the plastic insulation and once again cause a fire so that's what arc fault circuit interrupters do is they detect bad arcs and um, will you know 
open up the circuit. And they also come in these two different forms. They look a lot like this. Um, so that's how it's done, is uh, determining good arcs from bad arcs. But that's a really technical thing because one has to determine what's the difference between a good arc and a bad arc, and this is incredibly technical. Um, if you think back to a fuse or a circuit breaker, they just, uh, I don't, they don't measure the current in, in the sense of a meter or anything, but they are designed to trip when a certain amount of current's done, and it's just a mechanical kind of a thing. On the other hand, the um, ground, uh, ground fault uh, circuit interrupters have a little bit of uh, technical competence inside of them, because they actually have to have a circuit that can detect the difference between the electrons going out and the electrons coming back. But they certainly are nothing that you would ever call like a computing device. But uh, when you get to these um, arc fault uh, devices, you do. You have to have uh, enough uh, smarts or programming in the uh, circuit boards to determine which is a good arc and which is a bad arc. Now, we've searched all over the net to try to find out the, how, you, how they determine that. And the best I've, I've found so far is this uh, technical paper, uh, Arc Fault Detection and Discrimination Methods. It's, it's both very technical and not exactly specific. So um, I put just the first uh, paragraph, the introduction part here, just so you, once again, they kind of explain what an arc is and safe arcs and unsafe arcs. Uh, this is a very technical paper for people who don't have any electronics background, so this is about as much as I'm going to put on there. Um, uh, it, it and some other papers we found refer to this, uh, the UL1699. It's the, the standard for arc fault circuit interrupters. Um, and like lots of technical documents, it's not free. So um, $798 is a little bit much for uh, us. We're only mildly interested in how these things work. Right? So I've certainly got a better use for $1,248 than to order these things. but. Uh, if you read some of these general documents like this one and you have enough uh, technology background to uh, kind of follow what's going on, I think what you'll get is what we got, which is our best guess is that it's some combination of frequency noise characteristics, the periodicity uh, relative to both series and parallel arcing. Now just one more little piece of techie information. Parallel arcing is what I just described when you crush that uh, extension cord under that throw rug, right? It goes from uh, the hot to the neutral or like that. It goes parallel across these two conductors. And the series just means something like um, you didn't put the screw down really tight when you put that new uh, outlet in, so it kind of arcs. You know? This was a, a big problem um, in um, aluminum wiring for many years is that uh, it would start arcing at the connection points, you know, you know, where you'd put equipment in, like an outlet. So if you're really a glutton for punishment, you might want to go find this, uh, this paper. <laughs> It'll tell you more than you probably wanted to know and uh, probably can follow. There's lots of graphs and stuff like that. So now you know what a uh, arc fault uh, circuit interrupter is and what its purpose is, which is to keep you from having your house burned down from uh, bad arcs. So there you go. So thanks for watching. Um, I hope this was informative because um, lots and lots of places now are requiring that uh, these arc fault interrupters are installed in uh, new construction or in uh, you know additions you put on your house. You have to check your local um, building codes and so on, but um, they're coming. I believe they are coming. So, if you want to know some other kind of weird things, you might want to go check our YouTube channel. Um, we got lots of videos on strange things. I don't think this one's too strange. I guess you'll decide. So, 10-4, Roger Rubber Ducky, over and out.